Hey, welcome back to Codgers Corner. My name is Norm, and uh, today I want to talk to you about an acquaintance I made here maybe about a month ago. Yeah, we became somewhat friends. Now, I wanted to tell the story here for a while, but I had to wait for things in my community to kind of calm down. <laughs> There's a lot of speculation and other things, and I didn't want to make the video too quick because some hearts would have been broken and accusations would have been made. Of course, none of that would have been towards me, but towards somebody in my community. I don't want to put his name out there because of the community. Somebody, as soon as they hear the name mentioned, they'll know who I'm talking about. This guy has been coming to the Philippines off and on for, I'd probably guess, the last 30 years. He got married here. He built a house here. I uh, didn't have children. He never did ever have children. Uh, his wife in Manila had children. She had two when he married her. Um, and he supported them. But somewhere along the line, she passed away. I don't know when. I never really quizzed him too much about that. But uh, yeah, she passed away and he continued to support her two daughters. Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but he built the house in, in Manila. But anyways, after she passed, um, I think he just gave up on the house. I'm, I'm not sure for what reason, maybe he just didn't want to go back for the memories or whatever. But like I said, he continued to support the, the two girls uh, in through university. He told me once they completed university, he's never heard from them since. Moving on, eventually he met somebody online. Um, he actually did meet a few people, but yeah, he got hooked on this one girl. And I don't know what to say. I mean, she was young. He vetted her until she was 18 years old. And then when, when she did turn 18, he came to the Philippines to meet her. Yeah, he was smitten. But I mean, who wouldn't be? Young people always look attractive, right? So yeah, he came here, visited here. Um, I'm not sure how long he was here for, I think three or four months. But in that time, he spent money and built a house for her family. Bought the land, built the house. And the coronavirus hit. So he had to go back before the lockdown. And he did. During those two years that he was away, she ended up getting pregnant. Now it wasn't him, he knows that. And apparently she told him so. And they broke it off. Now a little time after that, a member of her family reached out to him to convince him to come back to the family. And he did. <laughs> you know, so after this family member convinced him to go back to her, he started sending her money again, supporting her. He sent her money for a, a bike, a new bike. She didn't do that. She took the money and she bought a used bike. He uh, came to the Philippines. Yeah, after he arrived to the Philippines, after a couple of days, him and his girlfriend invited us out to the to their place to go swimming and, and enjoy a meal together and we did when I arrived when I arrived yeah he was an okay guy we connected had lots to talk about and then we got on the topic about his relationship he didn't know that I already knew the backstory but you know he never he never gave me any BS about it he's just pretty much honest about what happened. Yeah, me and him went down. We had, you know, a little something to eat before we were going to sit down and have the big meal later. Had a couple drinks. Well, I don't drink, but yeah. So we started talking and he went on to tell me that he was just basically here to kind of test the waters with her to see what, you know, if they had a future together. But upon arriving to the airport, he met her. 
yeah, she put on some weight. She had a baby, you know, what, what do you expect? But yeah, he was kind of hoping to see that little nubile body that she once had. That wasn't the case. But at that point, he seemed like, okay, well, you know, that's, that's a small thing. He still kind of had feelings for her, but he just wanted to kind of wait it out a bit, see what it was going to be like. So after that, we had a meal together. His girlfriend, my wife, and I all sat down, enjoyed a meal. It was nice. And then uh, he started talking about doing some sightseeing. Well, my wife knows the Philippines quite well, so she told him all the places to go to, you know, that was close to the place that he wanted to go to, Bohol. So yeah, him and his girlfriend went out, they had a good time. They did all the things my wife suggested and more. And then we got together later on after he got back. And he didn't really seem to be too happy about the situation. He kind of confided in me and I promised I wouldn't say anything until he was gone. Mom's the word. <laughs> was my coded message to him in front of the girls. And yeah, so his beef was the fact that the whole time that they were together, she pretty much spent most of the time on the phone. Even when, when, even when they went out for a meal. Yeah, they talked a little bit, but yeah, she wasn't really talking to him like she was the first time he came to the Philippines when she was 18. She wanted to bring her baby along. I can understand that he didn't want to have a baby involved, you know, he's still trying to establish some sort of a relationship with her. So maybe that might have been one of the reasons why she wasn't too talkative. She might have been a little upset about not being able to have her little baby with her. He told me after after the first meal that we had together, um, he had invited her family to come over. And apparently, you know, they ordered stuff that they shouldn't have ordered, at least to him, it was his opinion. He, they kind of took advantage of him. They also went swimming, invited other people to go swimming that he ended up bucking up the bill for. He's not a poor man, he just found it a little disrespectful, I guess you could say. Yeah, I would too, you know, somebody taking advantage of me that way. But yeah, another beef of his was the fact that the passion wasn't there anymore. Their nocturnal activities <laughs> weren't, what, weren't what he had expected. He expected a bit more. I'm not sure what he expected actually, but apparently her favorite position was the starfish with the bent arm. You know, the one where it's bent over so she can read the phone. <laughs> yeah. That's one thing I don't allow. I don't allow the phone in the bedroom or in the, or in the kitchen during mealtime. Yeah, things weren't going well for him and he basically told me he wanted to ditch the girl. But he was going to wait till the next night. He needed to go back to Manila for something. He was going to take her, but he basically told me that yeah, he was just going to tell her it was over, pack his bags and leave. And go back home. He told me he wasn't ready for another relationship now. He had to go back and take care of his mother. Kind of a cautionary tale, you know, especially with young girls. You have no idea where their mind is at half the time. You leave for two years and they get pregnant and, and, and you know it wasn't you. But anyways, I mean, whose fault was this really? I mean, at the end of the day, he shouldn't have been sending her money, you know, to support her during the whole time. He did kind of his fault. I mean, he was grooming a young girl until she was 18 years old. I have no idea what was in his mind. Even at the poolside at the resort, I mean, he was basically ogling 13 and 14 year old girls at the pool that were kind of making a spectacle of themselves in front of us. But <clears throat> I preferred to move to back to his room, sit on the balcony and drink because of that. He seemed a little apprehensive, but you could see that I didn't want to sit there with that because my wife and my child were sitting, you know, playing in the pool just not too far from us. Like I said, whose fault is this really? Is it, you know, is it the girl's fault that this all happened, that they broke up and stuff like that? It's just something that you need to think about. You know, young people have a different mindset. It's my personal opinion, okay? It's my personal opinion. You don't, you don't need to be chasing young girls because, you know, there's a big world out there for them. And I mean, if you can't give them 100% of your attention, your focus and attention, they're going to find it somewhere else. You're going to take them away from their family, you know, and move move back to your country or move so far that her family can't afford to visit. She's going to need to spend time on her phone with them because she's still attached to them. You know, it's different in our culture, you know, we're 
basically trained at a young age to depend on ourselves, to become independent from our family. It's not like that here. So yeah, it's kind of my advice. You know, that little story might kind of shed a little bit of light on the whole situation. I don't know. But it was something that I thought I'd share with you. I'm not a big storyteller. I'm not that great at it. But I hope some of you learned a little lesson from this. Maybe start thinking about looking for somebody in their 30s. But anyways, my name is Norm. This is Codger's Corner. I hope you found this somewhat entertaining and enlightening. Please subscribe. Peace out.